This study was unique in that it was carried out at the racetrack, where thoroughbred racehorses competed at maximal intensities over various distances and in a range of weather conditions. Thoroughbred racehorses exhibit a hypothermic exercise response due to their very high rates of metabolic heat production, which can push deep core body temperatures to critical levels. Under most circumstances, this heat is readily dissipated to the environment due to the most efficient thermoregulatory mechanisms. But sometimes, when there are adverse weather conditions, thermoregulation may be impaired. If core body temperature attains critical levels, a condition called exertional heat illness may be evident. This is clinically a neurological condition and reflects cerebral changes due to a heated brain. The problem is that exertional heat illness can present in many ways, and misdiagnosis is most common. Early on, called emergent exertional heat illness, horses have vague clinical signs. These might be head nodding, extreme irritability and restlessness. In humans, the situation is similar, and early signs include confusion, dizziness, irritability, and often aggressive behaviours. As the condition progresses, the clinical diagnosis of exertional heat illness becomes much easier. There are levels of altered mentation, horses are described as having a glassy-eyed appearance, and may fall over, crash into objects, and have varying levels of ataxia. At this stage, they represent an increasing risk to themselves and their handlers. Early detection is key in all species. In humans, clinicians maintain that early detection before any clinical signs are evident and treatment at that time will abort progression. In horses, one of the most consistent findings is a skin which is described as burning hot to the touch, and this was across the entire spectrum of cases. Feeling the skin, however, is extremely subjective. What was needed was an objective approach. Enter the infrared thermometer. It is an inexpensive point-and-shoot device providing a reading in 150 milliseconds. It determines temperature by detecting infrared thermal radiation being emitted from the skin that is proportional to its temperature. So this study was undertaken to determine whether the infrared thermometer could be used as an indicator of emergent exertional heat illness. A benchmark level of 39 degrees Celsius was chosen and horses above this level were considered to be at risk and targeted for cooling interventions. The findings were that skin temperatures were established for horses after racing in mild, warm and humid and hot weather conditions. On the mild days, there was a widespread of skin temperatures, with very few above 39 degrees, and all horses cooled effectively. On the hot days, all skin temperatures were skewed toward the upper extremes, with many horses showing levels of 40 to 41 degrees. It was apparent, however, that horses coped quite well on the hot days. As long as there was airflow, they could evaporate their sweat and most horses could cool with routine cooling techniques. It was on the warm and humid days that there was a problem. Most horses had skin temperatures between 35 to 41 degrees. Horses at the higher levels had greater difficulty in the recovery period because the high humidity levels impaired the evaporation of sweat. These conditions were considered to be perilous and horses were targeted, rapidly assessed and prioritised for immediate and aggressive cooling interventions. The benchmark level of 39 degrees as the target level for increased risk was found to be appropriate. So what are the implications for clinicians and race day practice? As the climate warms, it is quite probable that the exertional heat illness may become more common. It is potentially life-threatening and heightens the public perception of risk associated with horse racing. Best practice informs that early detection is key. This study showed that the infrared thermometer enabled targeting of horses considered to be at high risk based on an elevated skin temperature in the immediate post-race period. The use of this simple, inexpensive device could improve animal welfare outcomes and really initiate transformational changes to the care of horses racing in adverse and sometimes very harsh weather conditions.